Greetings and welcome to Simple Scotch Reviews. Here we actually have an impromptu of a special edition version of Aberlauer 12. So rather than the standard Aberlauer 12 double cask, it is Aberlauer 12, did Steven say double cask? No, just Aberlauer 12 non-chill filtered edition. It is a 12 year old single malt Scotch whiskey from the Speyside region bottled at 48% ABV. So my understanding is that this is pretty much just a higher proof, non-chill filtered version of, it does say double cast matured in small, not, not in the old packaging ways. Um, I know they're also rebranding the packaging. I think this is more along the lines of their new packaging. So yeah, it still says, uh, double cast. So basically my understanding is it's just a higher proof, non-chill filtered version of Aberlour 12 double cask. But to get into it here, so someone can correct me in the comments if they actually know better and that I'm wrong, but my understanding is that the difference of the Aberlour double cask series and for example, Bulvaney's double wood series is that Aberlour sets the whiskeys to mature so they both include sherry maturation and ex-bourbon cask maturation. But my understanding is that the Bulvaney Double Wood actually puts it in the ex-bourbon for, let's say, 10 years out of the 12 for the 12 Double Wood. And then shift, it pours all the whiskey into sherry cask. My understanding is that they move the whiskey from one to another. Uh, at least that's what I've heard. Um don't know why they do it that way, but that's how they, they do it. They finish it off in there. Um, I, the Aberlauer approach seems to make more sense. Um, so Aberlauer, my understanding is that they age some of the whiskey in ex sherry cask and some of the whiskey in ex bourbon cask for the full length of maturation and then blend them to, to taste. Um, seems a lot easier. I, I'm sure there's reasons that different distilleries do it different ways, but just kind of that up front, I guess that's my understanding of behind the double cask, what that is. Um, let's get into it here. Right away, when compared to some of the other, well, what I'm accustomed to with the different double cask whiskeys from Aberlauer, obviously the higher proof, 5% higher than the 18 and 8% higher than both the 16 and 12 year old versions, which I also really enjoy, but definitely you can tell the difference in ABV right away. Not a bad thing by any means. So on the nose, I'm definitely getting some caramel, some brown sugar. Honestly, to me, this one, more than the other Aberlauer's even, it's baking spice forward. Rather than fruit with baking spice behind it, I get the baking spice and the fruit, like it's a strong amount of baking spice. Definitely getting fruitiness along with that caramel and brown sugar. Maybe even a little bit of red apple. Those baking spices are there. So the fruit plus the baking spices gives it kind of a apple crisp kind of vibe. Just, you know, fruit baked with the, with the spices. Um, in addition to that red apple, what I find interesting is that in their tasting notes, they actually put strawberry as a tasting note, which isn't, <laughs> strawberry is distinct and it's not really a fruit I've picked up in whiskey much before, but as I was trying to place that fruit note, then I read that on the packaging, I'm like, you know what? It could be strawberry, which is not, not a very common, uh, maybe one other whiskey that I can think of that I've gotten a specific strawberry note from. So in the palette, I'm also picking up a hint of vanilla that I didn't really get any vanilla in the nose. But for me, this whiskey kind of comes in layers and it's complex. So that initial layer, there's a hint of vanilla, but that initial first layer is the sweetness, brown sugar, then the baking spices hit up front. And then those strong baking spices hitting up front for me start to fade and then that allows the fruit to come through a lot better. Um, the fruit that comes through is that strawberry note and then 
a little bit of that apple, but then as things start to fade to the back end of the palate and into the finish, the fruit kind of switches to almost more tropical to me, just more tropical-y fruit notes. Um, finish is, is long, which is enjoyable. Um, honestly, I expected a, it to be just baking spice finish, just because usually when those notes are present, that's what's in the finish for me. Um, but I think the fruit hangs around really well in the finish, and along with a subtle hint of that baking spice, but subdued behind the fruit. Lingering fruit and some baking spice. It's a nice finish. It's long. It's, it's a very pleasant whiskey. Yeah, nothing to dislike here. Fruit, baking, spice is kind of the main theme. I explained how they switch, but excellent stuff. Um, overall, very good whiskey. I certainly recommend it. Um, I'm not like some people who hate on the Avalauer Double Cast series. I enjoy the Standard series. It's It was nice experiment and interesting to see the higher proof, non-chill filtered version. Um, I don't know what that necessarily says for chill filtration. I'm not gonna make definitive claims. If you gave me double cast 12 non-chill filtered and double cast 12 chill filtered at the same proof, then we can have more of a discussion. I personally am thinking that, yeah, the difference in ABV is making a huge difference here. Um, but either way, we don't need to get down that road of chill filtration. It's awesome whiskey. I certainly recommend if you're an Aberlauer fan, it's a great twist on Aberlauer. If you're avoiding Aberlauer due to the ABV, because that's something important to you and you won't buy anything at low proof, go for it. It's good. Um, excellent whiskey. If you're an Aberlauer fan, I think it really kind of can intensify some of the Aberlauer notes. Um, to me, the baking spice shows up a lot more than it does even in the lower proof versions. That's a real difference for me between these two. And the finish is also a lot longer, which is a pleasant experience. So check out the channel. Hope this review helped. Like, subscribe, stay up to date. Look at all the other videos. There's more coming. I got a whole queue full of whiskeys to review. So hopefully we can get, get those up quickly. Um, hopefully some other whiskey in addition to the scotch. We get some more Irish, some... American, who knows, maybe even some other whiskeys, Irish, American, maybe even some more Canadian. We'll see. There's all sorts of kinds up, and we're going to get more more whiskeys reviewed. I've got a queue of pending reviews, so we'll crank out some more of these impromptu reviews to get through them. But enjoy your whiskey journey. Hopefully this review helps if it's a whiskey you've been considering pulling the trigger on, because not everyone can just pull the trigger on every whiskey that they want to get, so... Hopefully this helps. Check out the channel, like, subscribe. I do respond to questions as quick as I can, which is usually pretty quick. So if you do put a question in the comments about the whiskey, I'll try to get that answered best I can as soon as possible. Um, enjoy your whiskey and thanks for watching.